Welcome to YowRadio.com, sponsored by Your Own World Books, publishers of Crossing the Cusp, Planet X Forecast, and 2012 Survival Guide, and the Colburn Bible. So join us now by raising your mind to the open and locked position and buckle up for the ride. You're on Yow Radio. Welcome to Planet X Special Report. I'm your host, Marshall Masters, and this show is devoted to serving the needs of those of you who get it and want to get through it. And if you're wondering if this is your cup of tea, well then, thanks for stopping by, and may your continued surfing be safe and satisfying. But for those of you who are looking for information, you're in good company, and I know you're in one of two places. You're well along in awareness and in the middle of preparation and planning, or you're on your way to getting there. Either way, know this. There are more of you out there than you could possibly imagine, and your numbers are growing exponentially. Well, hey, this is Marshall, and I'm going to be on tonight with a dynamic team of gentlemen. They're all from the Planet X forecast, uh, play, excuse me, Planet X Town Hall message board. We're going to have Ed Douglas, Richard Goodwin, and Terrell Croft on. And let me just bring them on right now and introduce them to you. Here we go. And we've got everybody online now. First off, Ed. Welcome Hello. to Planet X Special Report. Thank you. Good Glad to have you on, Ed. And uh, you've been with me on uh, Cut to the Chase and other shows. Uh, you're uh, an administrator on Planet X Town Hall. And, man, we've been following this Comet Elenin thing for quite some time. And, well, we've both been scratching our heads on it. And uh, we've got a new member to the board, and somebody's really got a lot of good background on it. It's uh, Richard Goodwin. Richard, welcome to Planet X Special Report. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Richard. If you could do us a favor and get a little more volume on that microphone. And then... That's That's a little better. There you go. And Terrell Croft. And uh, for those of you who want to follow along and get some really good, interesting links on Comet Elenin, if you go to uh, the uh, planetxtownhall.com and scroll on down, it's a bit way down on that home page to my topic areas, you'll see one there called the Comet Elenin uh, Research Team. And I've got a series of links up there that Terrell sent in. Uh, before showtime. And so uh, what I wanted to do at the top of the show is uh, first off introduce a few concepts that we're going to be using here and explain to the listeners that this is really not going to be an entertainment format. You're literally going to hear a team of researchers knocking the ideas around. There's an old adage uh, from the Romans that says, uh, to the heart of such a great mystery as this, there are many roads. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow those different roads. And we're going to do it in a structured way because my motivation for doing this series and you know, getting these guys together and they all volunteered to help out, and I was like, wow, this is cool, uh, is that the thing that concerns me most about Common Ellen and right now is I see one-ism. 
a lot of people are struggling to find that one concept or idea or gotcha, whatever it is, that pulls everything together. And if there's one thing I've learned in 10 years of doing this kind of research is that's a fool's errand because it's a big universe and it's a mighty big sky. And there could be comet Elenin and there could be other risks as well. And so what we always have to be mindful of is, you know, you keep one eye out there because whatever's going to happen out there is going to happen out there. And the other eye is to look to see if there's any consequences for us for what comes from out there. And however that's going to sort itself out, it comes down to the same things, food, water, shelter, and so forth. So in this, uh, what I wanted to do first off is to define a couple of terms for those of you who are coming to this topic for the first time you're really new. And uh, a couple of simple terms, and I'm going to ask the guys to all chime in with things that they think are important terms that you should know. So when we refer to them later on in the conversation, you're not doing what we all tend to do sometimes, and that is to go, say what? <laughs> That's not going to help you. Now, first thing is a term called the ecliptic. And it's a real essential concept. Imagine you're in the center of the sun. Yeah, I know it's going to be a warm spot. But there you are in the center of the sun, and you just take this concentric green and spread it out all the way through the planets, major planets in our solar system, out to the 12 constellations of the zodiac. And that is the ecliptic. And then we have below that the southern skies, and above that are the northern skies. Then there's two other terms you need to know, aphelion, perihelion. In an object that it's orbiting the sun, in an elliptical orbit, its furthest difference, distance from the sun is aphelion. In this case, this thing is, I don't know, as I understand it, as far out as, as almost a light year. But perihelion is its closest distance to the sun. And with this object, it's going to get pretty close. And uh, those are the three terms I have. Now let me go to each of the guys. Ed, do you have a term that everybody needs to be mindful of? Oh, geez. Um, hmm. You want to punt and I'll go? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to punt on that one for now other than uh, coma for the uh, comet. Okay, which and is, a coma... Uh, it's it's what we see of the comet. It's not necessarily the solid. Um, gosh, I got to see if I can explain this correctly. It's uh, all the illuminated uh, dust and uh, ice and everything that we see once it gets uh, usually inside the orbit of Jupiter. Okay, Terrell, you got one for us? Yes, I have a few actually. I think the most important thing is a gravity well. The sun sits inside of a deep gravity well, the deepest in our solar system. The earth sits inside of a gravity well, and they're connected by a gravity trough. Inside those gravity troughs are magnetic portals that connect the sun and the earth together. Now, this object that's coming is also connected to the sun. It also sits inside of a gravity well. And mm -hmm. the earth passed through the connectors that connect these two suns together on 311 at the Japan quake. It also happened again on 227, 2010 with the Chile quake when the Earth aquifer shifted and whenever the Earth axis shifted and we had those giant events. And the reason is because okay. we passed between these two stars. So th that's the scientific data that says we need to be careful about the other alignments that are coming up. Right. Okay, we got gravity wells, and later on I'm going to ask you too about electrical interactions. Richard, you got one for us? Well, I guess I'd have to say the arc minute. You'd think okay. A, you'd think that would be a measure of time, but it's not. It's a measure of distance. And I won't really go into quite a bit of detail right now, but just remember that it's a measure of distance. Okay. So we have gravity wells, which is sun's in a gravity well, earth is in a gravity well, and when they line up, funky things happen. And we have arc minutes, and an arc minute is not about time, 
It's about distance. And Ed, coma, and the coma is really, well, it's when it lights up, and we're all standing out in our backyard pointing up at the sky and going, woo, uh, we're going to see the coma and we're going to see the tail. And also, by the way, folks, uh, the tail of an object is its going to, there are different types of tails. And uh, the one that is the bright one that goes away is gaseous. And then there's another tail which is uh, going to be particulate. You can always tell the one that is gaseous because it goes directly away from the sun. Now, with the uh, preliminaries done, what we need to do is get into the Comet Elenin story. And I think uh, I'd like to get Terrell to start off and give us just a quick timeline of when this thing was uh, discovered and uh, where we're at right now because there's a lot of confusion about it. Well, it was discovered on December 10th, 2010, which became the time that we were able to get the JPL data to be able to draw up our timelines. Mm -hmm. So as far as the timeline goes, on March the 2nd is the day that the, this, so you guys are calling it a comet. I don't believe this is a comet at all. And I believe that the entire NASA story is a cover for an inbound dwarf star. I believe that's the object okay. that we're tracking. I believe that JPL is tracking the gravity well of the inbound dwarf star and that the objects that they see are orbitals that are orbiting inside and outside of the proton cloud that is masking this massive object. See, if this, this was just a comet on the alignments, we wouldn't have these events. And so, All right. Are you with me? I believe this is a PSYOP. I believe this is very similar to 9-11. I'm seeing a lot of the 9-11 PSYOP operations going from the intelligence agencies. And this looks like a sign up to me. So there's the story of the comet Elenin. That's a comet. That's inbound. And there's the story of the sign up. And so I'm on the sign up side of the equation, where others are on the comet side. Well, I tend to be on the sign up side myself. That's the part of this thing that uh, has been quite interesting for me. And uh, I'd like to get Ed and uh, Richard to weigh in on that. What do you guys think? Well, my take on it is, is, is the view of a common man. It's just a comet. That's all it is. Okay. But after looking at some things, of course, I do have some reservations about that statement. Well, you know, I, I, I'm with you there. You know, I mean, I haven't heard anything here that I've disagreed with. I mean, to me, it's still answer E, all of the above. Um but uh, the one thing I do agree with Terrell is I am seeing the manipulation. And that, for me, uh, I have a good background of, you know, following this kind of stuff. And I know Terrell came out of the 9-11 uh, side of things. And, you know, you really learn a lot about that. And I am just, uh, there are some things that puzzle me here because, at, at one level, I almost feel like this could be a red herring, the way it's being used, that this object, I agree with uh, the notion that this object is perturbing the Earth, that uh, we're having the earthquakes as a result of this. But I'm still not sold on it being the planet X that we've been looking for. And the question I have in my mind 